If you're looking to transform the Corsair 6500X with a vertical GPU mount to make for an even nicer setup, well then stick with me because I'm going to show you how to do it. Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn here to show you the steps for installing the vertical GPU mount and what difference it can make to your system with some thermal testing later on. Now, the 6500X requires a 6500 series vertical GPU mount kit. I would recommend not trying to use a different brand, for example, Cooler Master's GPU mount, because it probably won't work. And that's because of the way this kit mounts into the case. Corsair has designed this kit, which as you can see here, comes in a number of different parts. And you need to install the cable, first of all, onto the bracket. Now the standard standoffs are set in the middle. You can also mount them further back if necessary, depending on your sort of GPU and the size of it. But for this build, we're using the 3090, which I found I didn't need to move it around, and it's in a good position for that. So in order to install it, we first need to install that cable and then to remove the standard bracketing on the left-hand side, removing the relevant number of brackets from here that are gonna be otherwise in the way of your graphics card when you go to mount it on the bracket. Now, it's worth noting that I accidentally removed too many and the wrong ones so pay attention when you're doing that but then what you need to do is just insert your gpu into the cable that you've installed on the bracket in the standard way that you would slot it into a pcie x16 slot on your motherboard there is a little plastic latch on the right hand side here which i found i had to slide out pay attention to that if you're struggling with getting your gpu into the bracket there and then just push it down and seat it into the bracket and then secure it with the screws so you want to make sure you put the two screws back in the end there to secure it back in place and then put any of the brackets in if you've done what i have and ended up with one spare just knocking around an empty slot there and then you've got what should be the finished product in terms of the GPU mounted to the bracket and ready to go into the case. Now, the reason that you can only use this bracket is because the 6500 has a thumb screw on the outside of the case, which you unscrew and then this whole bracket comes out down here. So rather than removing multiple PCIe brackets from the back of the case and then installing the bracket, you're removing an entire thing from the case just below the top. You then need to put the cable into the top PCIe X16 slot, so the one closest to the top of the motherboard, and then we're going to seat that bracket back down into the case. Now, if you look at the outside, you'll find there's a couple of hooks that hook into the external part of the case that you can see here, and then it lines up with that screw hole, so you need to put that screw back in place to secure the bracket into place. Now, quickly for the wiring logic of it, I'm using Corsair's RM Shift 1000X. Now this is going to vary depending on the GPU you have. So this power supply has four PCIe eight pin power cables. And if you've got an older GPU lock I'm using here, which is a 3090, then you'll probably end up using some of those cables. You see a black version of those cables here, but the idea is to pinch those cables together, pushing the six pin and two pin parts of it together to make an eight pin connector. It's a little bit fiddly to do because you'll see there are some hooks on either side that you need to adjust and then you need to push it into the slot and hook it over the plastic notch on there. And you obviously need a separate cable for each of these connectors and you need to push them in firmly. The other end plugs into the PCIe slash CPU power connector on your power supply unit. I'm showing you this now so you can see it really clearly on where these cables are plug in so it makes it obvious. But you do need to make sure that the cables are pushed all the way in, especially with those fiddly six pin and two pin connectors on the GPU end. Now, alternatively, you might use a 12 volt high power connector. This is for Nvidia's 40 series graphics cards. On this power supply, it has one connector on one end, which you can see here, and then two that plug into the PCIe slash CPU power connector end on the power supply. And then basically you've just got one cable that runs through to your graphics card, for example, this 4070. So that takes the place of the adapters that you usually get with those GPUs. When we've done that, we've got our cables plugged into a power supply unit. We obviously need to run them towards the front. I chose to run mine down to the bottom and then come up behind the GPU so they're less visible. Then we just need to make sure we pinch those cables together and to push them in. Obviously, you're seeing this from the top, a bit of a strange angle, but the idea is to make sure those are fully seated in. So make sure you can see that and push those all the way in neatly. And then you should find that they seat in there and they're quite well hidden 
by the end of it, so it ends up looking pretty good. Now I did some stress testing and thermal performance testing of this, but I do want you to bear in mind that it's two different GPUs because I was using a BTF 4070 Ti Super versus the 3090 in the vertical position because separate videos, more content and other things. But I put both of them under heavy load and also I don't have aircon, so bear that in mind. This is a British summer, it's been pretty hot, but the stress testing initially with a standard horizontal position, I used Port Royal, a number of games and other 3D Mark tests as well. And I found that it was usually getting around 60 degrees on the GPU. And that was the same while gaming. You'll notice that the hardware monitor stats show a max of 80 on the memory, 81 on the hotspot and 68 on the graphics card, which isn't too bad in this format. Meanwhile, with the vertical GPU mount and with the fans set to quiet, by the way, on both modes in the system, I then did some testing on Port Royal and other tests and the stress testing basically ended up showing very similar results in terms of getting around 68 degrees GPU temperature during the stress test period. But I did note that the memory got hotter, so we had 94 degrees on the memory. But otherwise, the GPU and the hotspot temps were roughly the same at the top end. So it doesn't seem to make a massive difference overall to the temps. And it does sit far enough away from the glass to not be throttled. So I think actually, if you're looking for an aesthetic change to your case, this is a pretty good choice. Hopefully you found this video useful. Check the links in the description to see more related content. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos, you might well find them interesting or useful, and most importantly, have a great life.